Hey guys, today we're taking a look at the Space Crab. This is the Space Pod Crab 03 kit here from Keiko, a lesser known model kit company because they don't really make a whole lot of stuff, but they do make this kit. I've had this for a while. Uh, I know this is also, I guess, made in cooperation with Wave, so it's kind of like a Wave release, sort of designed by Keiko or something like that, anyway, something. Anyway, it's uh, not really from anything. It's non-scale, but I think it's actually, in like reality, it's close to 130th scale, something around there. I think it's a little bit smaller than 120 scale, but something like that. Anyway, the really cool thing about this, too, is that when you buy this kit, it's actually a set. You get two of them in the box, so it's kind of like the 135th scale Mechatro kits where you get two of them in the box. This one as well. And I think they have released this set in different colors, but I think mainly, probably if you're going to be buying this set, this is probably the set you're going to get where like one solid color version and one clear version also included in here as well. So we'll take a look at the box, take a look at the runners to get it all built up and just see how cool it actually is. All right, so the front of the box just has the 3D model of that, kind of close up and back. Kind of reminds me of the RG style box art, doesn't it, a little bit? And then the same thing here on the sides. You have the sticker indicating like the color version of it, I guess. Over on this side where we got a bunch of information in, in Chinese, where you can see uh, some pictures of the clear version of the kit. So just it's kind of really hard to tell what's going on really in these pictures. Uh, you can't see it all too well. Then you got some other pictures over here. So it does come with this like little stand here as well too, as like that's this little like uh, metal plate thing that you can have it holding in its arms. I, I believe it comes with a little pilot figure seated inside there as well too. Around here on the other side, we do have a bunch more information actually in English and some other just uh, detail shots here of the 3D model. Uh, here you can see we're getting our runners here. So these are like the same runners in different colors. So we get a look at this. Oh, actually I was thinking that I had the clear version of this, but actually it looks like maybe not. I have the light blue and orange version, which is good. Actually, I didn't really want a clear version of it. So this sticker makes a lot more sense now that one version of the kit is in gray and orange. The other version is in white and blue. So that's what I'll have to build here with these. So again, kind of like the Mecha Troll We Go kits. In the box here, we've also got some water slide decals and instructions. Let's go ahead and take a look at this stuff. First, the decals, just because I'm curious, because we have two sets of them in here. Hmm, all right, very interesting. Actually, it's the same set of decals, but in different colors. So in this set, they're red and black. So this one's probably a little bit easier to see, but the decals look really super cool. Those look great. So those are going to look really cool on the kit when it's all built up. And the other set is the same decals, but in mostly white. And there's a couple there in red and in black as well too, so those look really nice. As for our instructions, we kind of got two different things here. This one I think is just the decal guide, I guess. You got the decals up there, and then this is just showing where to place those around on the kit, on the base, and then on the kit itself here. And then this, I guess, is our actual instruction manual. So MS Garage, uh, Space Pod Crab 03, you got some more kind of information, stats on the, on the Space Crab here. And then we have got our parts list here, it looks like, and then straight into the construction. So putting together our little pilot figure, kind of cockpit first, and then building the rest of it up after that. Not sure how well the construction is gonna be of this kit. It's not a Bandai kit, so shouldn't really expect Bandai quality, but I assume it should be fine. I'm not sure if we're gonna have any very tight or very loose parts or anything like that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the runners. All right, so the A runner here is our base piece there, obviously, and then this looks like probably the canopy piece for like around the cockpit. We've got two of this, so both of the bases are gonna be just both the same color, this kind of smoky clear. Our B runner here is, there's the orange version, and here is the kind of cream color version of that. And the detail on it looks fantastic. Also, it's kind of glossy. I don't think it's like an intentionally kind of glossy kit. I think that's just kind of how their plastic is made or whatever, but it is going to be a little bit more of a glossy sheen to this plastic here. And the C-Runner, again, the detail on it looks fantastic. There's the gray version, here's the light blue version. And the D-Runner with some of the larger kind of outer armor pieces. There's the orange version and the cream color version. And our last big runner here is runner E. Once again, here's the gray version and the light blue version of that. Then there's a couple of smaller clear runners. Here's runner F for a couple little parts there in clear, two of those. And runner G for a couple parts here in clear red, kind of like the back tail lights kind of of it. So we got two of those as well. So there you go. I mean, it looks like a lot of great detail. You got some really fine little parts in there. So I think it's gonna be a really cool looking kit when it's all put together. So I'm really looking forward to this one. I've been hanging onto this kit for a long time. So it'd be nice to finally get it put together, see what it's like and have some fun with this. So, so let me go ahead and do that and then we'll see how they look. 
Hey guys, before we get into the review portion, just wanted to let you know by some amazing coincidence, uh, this kit has recently been reproduced and is now back in stock actually at USA Gundam Store right now. So if you go check the link down below, uh, check out on USA Gundam Store, you can find this kit there. Not sure how long that's going to be the case, but if you're interested in this kit, check the link down below and go check out the kit for yourself there. Alright guys, so here's how it looks all put together. Obviously the orange version you're seeing first, then I'll show you the blue and white version there as well. Of course the parts you can mix and match and make them different colors if you want. Have them just a mix of uh, all four colors at once or you know kind of just swap them. But very cool kits. You're definitely going to want some glue. I used a little bit of glue just basically on mostly the pilot figure and like the computer monitor inside the sort of... Uh, cockpit there but there's definitely a lot of other areas where I could have used glue and I definitely will use glue later once the kit's actually painted and everything. I wanted to try to use as little glue as possible just for the review just to show you guys about uh, what kind of stability you can look forward to just with the kit straight out of the box so you have an idea of uh, just how much glue you're going to need. Now you don't need to glue necessarily everything on this but there are definitely parts that uh, are just are not going to be fitting super well with this obviously not being a Bandai kit or even a Kotobuki kit. As you kind of work your way down the line there of like model kit company size although obviously the quality is going to get a little bit less so well it's a very cool kit and really nicely detailed and there's a lot of cool uh, articulation and everything in there still fitting quality and all that's not going to be the best but it's pretty cool so let's go ahead and take a closer look at everything so let's talk accessories here now obviously aside from the two kits and the two bases for those which are also quite nice we'll talk more about that here in just a second yeah, this piece was just supposed to look like this big metal kind of sheet sort of thing that it, these can work on in space, I guess. And you have these four of these little tiny plastic pegs that will peg that down onto the base if you want. So those will fit into those four holes like that. So I've done, gone ahead and done that here with the blue one just so you guys can see how that looks. But that's how that looks on there. We also have an alternative sort of uh, backpack, I suppose, if you will. So this has like a little winch cable there on the back and it's just sort of like a little flatbed sort of truck thing for carrying that. So it's basically to swap this huge part here for the back half of this. You can take off this whole arm unit there and put this bit on there instead and just have this as just a little guy going off like that, just like that, and that's pretty cool. And the really cool thing about that is that this set makes for a really good kit bash material for your Gunpla. This makes like a cool backpack and you can have the arms on there for like some extra set of arms and stuff. You can kit bash with your Gunpla or whatever with this, and then you still have this little guy to, you know, do something like that and he just doesn't, he can still have this thing on the back of there, which is pretty cool. Now let's talk about the base because you have a couple points of articulation here at this point. You can rotate that, it's a little bit tight. I don't want to remove anything too roughly because this thing is a bit of a hand grenade at the moment. Like I said, there's no glue on it, so it moves there. And you also have a bit of rotation here at the end as well, too. So you can adjust the angle of that, and it's just on a peg, so you can have it uh, kind of turned off to the side or something like that. And so here is like the main, I guess, uh, not cockpit, but more of a, a cabin, I guess is probably the right word for that. Now there's a lot of little stuff that moves on here. These little arms underneath have a couple points of articulation on there. And this is a, a section of the build that's particularly prone to falling apart. So I'm being really careful with that. Uh, but that little arm comes out and you have a little bit more articulation there with that as well too. That should bend there like that. Those mini arms actually fit right onto holding this little guy here like that. Then you have another arm. This arm that's folded across the front here will fold out so you have some nice articulation with that too. A couple points for articulation. You'll see it just as I'm turning stuff it's going to be just kind of like falling apart like I said. It needs some glue, needs some paint on there to tighten things up but that arm will all fold out and then the little claw on the end of that will also open up. So you've got uh, kind of three little fingers on that that will Pinch, and you can also actually rotate this here as well too to kind of change the angle of that. Yes, yeah, so like I said, not wanting to stay together so well at the moment, but there we go. So you can change the angle of that and so you have this little very nice little articulated arm there on the front as well. And then you have this other part underneath which is kind of like on the side here that seems kind of hard to get to unless you have the arm folded out and basically this will just rotate up. Well, it should. There you go. That's basically all. This little part will just rotate up on the side there and I think that's meant to look like a sort of like little kind of cutting torch sort of thing basically but it's so small and there's small little arm so I'm not sure if that's really how that's meant to be used or whatever I don't know but that little guy will just fold up a little bit there like that you can completely remove the arm off the front of here if you want you got some nice detail there you can see as for opening this up you can open it up but it's really weird this uh, bar that like wraps around the front of there actually plugs into the bottom so you have to kind of like actually take that off first before you open up or it's just gonna like come off so you can see when you open this all up like that, there's your little dude seated up inside of there. 
very nice. But yeah, these uh, bars are plugged into the bottom here, so it's kind of an odd design. But anyway, that just plugs, we can close that back down, plug those back into place. So it looks very cool, and there's a lot of detail on there. Once you have this, uh, like I said, like uh, painted up, you have some little bits glued in place where you want them to be painted, all that little detail, it's gonna be really looking very nice. Ah, okay, sorry guys, I checked the manual again, and uh, I guess actually what you can do is if you remove that whole section off the bottom of there and just kind of like move things around, then plug it back onto there, you can have these parts kind of out extended more with the arm like that. You could also switch them to the opposite sides uh, and have this little guy, then you could actually use this little like uh, cutting torch little arm there on there as well like that so you can utilize these tools more by just kind of like folding it all out it's a little bit easier to actually take that out change the pose then plug it back onto there i find because some parts are a little bit tight there you also of course have these clear parts up here for the lights here and here and then the group of the four square ones there at the top as for like the main backpack unit here less as for like the main backpack sort of unit here uh, we have these really cool red lights there on the back and then up underneath these panels there's a lot of detail too so i want to take this off of here to show you guys so removing this panel off the top there you can see you have some more detail up underneath there just so it's the kind of thing that is going to be covered up by this so if you were wanted to do something cool with this you could have it like looking like it's in a shop getting some maintenance on it or something you have this big armor panel like off to the side and maybe some mechanic or something's doing something with that otherwise this is just going to be covered up like that i mean the armor on there does look cool but it's nice to have that detail inside there as well too now as for the actual arm so a bunch of points of articulation and also it is going to be once again a little bit kind of weak so when this is actually closed up there's a couple points that sort of lock it into place there's a little pin there which plugs into the side of the body and then this little hook here plugs onto this part at the back so that will make sure that you have it folded up in the right place like that so that will bend out basically at three points here, here, and here. At the main joint, of course, you can also rotate that. And then between the second and third joint, there's a point of rotation there as well too, which is on like a 45 degree angle. And of course, at the point where this is actually plugged into the arm, you can also rotate that. And now this is on a little track too, so you can slide that forward and back as well. So you can have this all completely, let's see. Just wanted to see it if you had it like at the full extend forward all the way like that then all the once you get to the end here of course these little claws will open up like that and then this one on the outside also opens up like that and now yeah this is one other one of the joints that's very loose on here so some of the joints are very tight some are very loose when you're moving stuff around stuff is just going to be kind of falling apart a little bit on you so again some muddling experience required for this one or at least just a little bit of glue but uh, again you can see up inside there a lot of really nice detail there and i love this detail up underneath here as well too with uh, this piece which is what will just kind of help to support this against the back of the uh, main part here once that's in place uh, this part just kind of helps to hold that up and it does look really cool the back of it just sort of reminds me of some sort of like a futuristic car I don't know, something out of like uh, the fifth element or Star Wars, something like that. Sort of looks like that with those taillights on there. But very cool design. You can see up in there a lot of nice detail as well, too. So you can just see, well, you know, once you've got this you know, all sanded up, you have some parts glued in place, and it's all painted, you're painting all this detail and everything, it's going to look fantastic. So for a quick size comparison, here it is with a standard size HG 144 scale Gundam kit and a 120 scale Mechatro kit. And just a reminder that the Crab kit is in 135th scale, so these are all over the place in terms of their scale, but you guys could just get the idea of the general size of this. I would say if you're going to be using this for Gundam kit bashing, it seems like 144 scale would be a good way to go. But anyway guys, that's just about going to do it here for the Space Crab. Like I said, very cool kit. Uh, straight out the box, it's fine. Definitely could use some work of just doing a, at least a little bit of panel lining and throw some matte coat on there just so it doesn't have that uh, plastic shine to it. Uh, but that'll help it look a little bit more realistic. I would say at the minimum, I would re recommend, you know, a little bit of glue, a little bit of panel lining, a little bit of top coat, and it's going to look fantastic. You already ha also have the decals included with the kit, which is really cool. Uh, but you know, if you wanted to fully paint it, it's going to look even better. But I mean, even with just what you get straight out the box, it's a really cool looking kit. The colors are really cool as well too. You have like uh, the white and uh, blue, which is looking a little bit more unusual with that kind of blue frame. But if you swapped it and put like the white armor parts on the gray frame, it would look very sort of realistic. Of course, the orange and gray looks sort of realistic as well too, as sort of like a construction maintenance kind of robot. But especially like for something in space, white also does seem like a kind of sensical color for that as well too. Most of what we see in space, like realistic stuff is usually white, right? So there's definitely a lot of potential there with this kit, even with just the minimal effort. But of course, even if you go 
more effort or what I think is probably most likely what people a lot of people are going to want on this kit for is for like kit bashing material it's fantastic for that as well too if you want to make some like custom thunderbolt kits I think this would be really awesome to get what kit bash some of these parts like with the HG Gundam Thunderbolt kit or something like that it could be very cool looking it certainly would kind of fit that aesthetic I think so anyway a lot of potential there guys so let me know your thoughts down below as always thank you so much for your support check the kit out at USA Gundam store now and save 10% off with that coupon code Zacharelius10 as always the link and the coupon code are down in the video description thank you guys so much for your support liking the video commenting subscribing all that I greatly appreciate guys y'all have a great day I'll see you later bye bye